tunneling through a potential energy barrier. Now we have a particle that is incident on a barrier from this uh, from the left hand side which is uh, called region 1 where the particle is free to move in a uh, potential well with a finite barrier. Now as we have seen in the previous problem when the particle is incident on a finite barrier its wave function decays exponentially inside the barrier. So those were the solutions we had in regions 1 and 3. So with that, we have this sinusoidal wave function decaying exponentially inside this barrier. Now, if this barrier has a width L, uh, it's going to be called a square barrier. And the other side, uh, I'm going to call region 3. If this exponential decay does not go to zero uh, when the particle uh, enters the barrier uh, or exits the barrier uh, then it can make it to the other side and it will have a solution for its wave function on region 3. Now <clears throat> here I'm assuming that the energy of the uh, particle that is incident on the square barrier from the left hand side is less than the potential energy u. Okay, so what happens classically? Classically, regions 2 and 3, these two regions are forbidden. Why are they forbidden? Let's see. The energy of the particle E is its potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Now, if the energy minus the potential energy is less than 0, that is, the energy of the particle is less than the height of this barrier, that, me, that would imply that the kinetic energy of the particle would be negative. Now, that doesn't make any sense. So this particle cannot go into the barrier. So it, there won't be any a possibility of finding the particle in region 2 or region 3. However, quantum mechanically, this is possible. According to the uncertainty principle, the particle can penetrate the barrier for a short time interval. The uh, uncertainty, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle uh, tells us that delta E times delta T is greater or equal to H bar over 2. Okay, so that's just the detail. Basically, we're saying that quantum mechanically, it's possible that the particle can penetrate this square barrier. The movement of the particle to the far side of the barrier, the fact that this particle can enter the barrier and go to the other side of the barrier is called tunneling. All right. So the probability of tunneling can be described by a transmission coefficient t and a reflection coefficient r. So the probability of transmission to the other side is t. The probability of reflection back to the uh, first region is r. t plus r obviously is equal to 1. The particle will either be transmitted to the right hand side or it will be reflected and uh, remain in, in the region 1. What is the probability of the transmission of this particle? Well, that is given by the square of the wave function in region number 2. So in region number 2, remember that inside the barrier, our solutions are exponentially decaying. Therefore, uh, the probability of making it to the other side would be equal to e to the minus uh, kx square or it will be proportional to e to the minus kx square while x is equal to the width of this barrier l so it will be e to the minus 2kl so the transmission coefficient will be proportional to e to the minus 2kl which is related to the square of the wave function uh, solution in region 2 or x equals l, making it to the uh, to region 3. Now, what is k here? k that appears here. k is the uh, wave, fu wave function, uh, k is the wave vector uh, k, and which is, uh, which has a magnitude square root 2m u minus e over h bar square. Remember that these are bound solutions, so u is greater than e, so this k is a real number. Therefore, this is going to be an exponential 
decay with barrier thickness. So you can see that as L increases, the probability of getting tunneling to the other side decays exponentially. Okay, so we talked about um, the tunneling process, tunneling through a potential energy barrier. We recall the solutions in regions where we have zero potential energy to be sinusoidal solutions. The solutions should match at the boundaries and um, the derivative must be continuous as well. And we, these requirements told us that in region two, we should have an exponential decay of the wave function when we go to this uh, uh, boundary between region one and two, approaching from the left-hand side. Uh, now, if this barrier has a width L, it's a square barrier. And if the energy of the particle is less than the potential energy, Classically, we see that the energy of the particle is potential plus kinetic. E minus U less than zero implies uh, kinetic energy less than zero. So the particle cannot exist in regions two and three classically. Quantum mechanically, it can, according to uncertainty principle, for a short time interval. Uh, and the movement of the particle from region one through the barrier to region three is called tunneling. The probability of tunneling is given by uh, a transmission coefficient which is proportional to the square of the wave function in region 2 for, uh, uh, evaluated at x is equal to L. So for, a, uh, for x we substitute the width of this uh, barrier in the solution. Now the probability of transmission and the probability of reflection, which is described by the reflection coefficient, they should add up to one. And uh, K, the wave vector uh, magnitude is square root two mu minus E over H bar square. And this tells us that um, this transmission coefficient decays exponentially with the width of the barrier. So the, the wider the barrier, the less the chances will be to get tunneling.